A few viewers have asked me if it's possible to create illusions in Krita. The answer is a yes. Today I'll walk you through an exercise you can follow along with if you'd like. Quick disclaimer, this is a classic exercise that's been around for many, many years, so I wouldn't be surprised if you've seen it before. Let's get started. You will need to create a perfect squared canvas. First, change the unit of measurement to your liking. I'll use centimeters. You can use inches if you want. Don't forget to change this drop-down menu accordingly. In my case, I need to change it from pixels per inch to pixels per centimeter. The last step is to enter the measurement of your canvas. I'll make mine 16 by 16 cm. Hit Create. I have set up my workspace and I am ready to start, but before to do so, let me show you what I've done. The pen pressure is off. The foreground and the background colors are set to black and white. I have chosen a basic digital brush. The opacity and flow of the brush are set to 100%. The size of the brush is set to 2 pixels. Finally, the background layer is filled with a light color and is locked. Let's go and activate the rulers. Go to View and check this box next to the option Show Ruler. We have now two rulers on the interface. To change their unit of measure, Right-click on any of the two rulers. I am going to choose centimeters. Here again, you can choose inches if you want. Create a new paint layer on the top of the background. Rename it Grid. Activate the Assistant tool. Select Parallel Ruler. We are going to create two rulers, one horizontal and one vertical. As a quick reminder to create a ruler, with your left mouse button click once on the canvas. This creates the starting point. Drag the cursor to the right and as you drag your cursor hit the shift key. This makes the ruler straight. Now, with the left mouse button, click again on the canvas to close the ruler. Repeat the process with a vertical ruler. If you want to move the rulers out of your way, use this Move button. Activate the Line tool. In the Tool Options Docker, check the box right next to the option Snap to Assistant. We are ready to start. Using the ruler as a reference, we are going to draw lines every 2 cm or every 2 inches. Time to create a shape, create a new vector layer on the top of the grid layer and rename it a Circle. Activate the Ellipse tool. In the Tool Options Docker are two drop-down menus. In the Fill drop-down menu, select Not Filled. In the Outline drop-down menu, select Brush. 
Find the middle of your canvas. For me, it's eight centimeters both ways. With your left mouse button, click once on the center point. But before you start dragging your cursor out to create your shape, hold down the control key on your keyboard. Now you can drag your cursor out. By using the control key, this allows you to create a circle from that very center point. While your finger is still holding down the control key, use another finger to press down the shift key this time as you are dragging out the cursor. The shift key allows you to create a perfect circle. Make the circle as big as you can and stop 2 cm or 2 inches from the edge of the canvas. Create a new vector on the top and rename it Lines. Before we start, go back to the grid layer and decrease the opacity of the layer. We are going to use that layer as a reference. Back to your Lines layer. Create horizontal and vertical lines inside the circle. Now that you are done, we are going to use the Edit Shapes tool to curve each line. The only thing that I want you to keep in mind here is to not curve the middle lines. Just watch me. Activate the Fill tool, it's the icon that looks like a paint bucket. Turn off the grid layer. Create a new paint layer on the top of the lines layer and rename it a Pattern. Fill each square with alternate colors, just watch me. Turn off all the layers above the grid layer. Turn on the grid layer and increase its opacity back to 100%. Unlock the background layer and fill it with white. When done, lock the background layer again. Back to the grid layer. You are going to fill every two squares with black. Remove the layers you don't need anymore. Create a paint layer on the top of a grid layer and rename it the Shadow One. Set the blending mode to multiply. Activate the freehand brush tool. In the Choose Brush preset, go to the Digital tag and find the Airbrush Soft. Now you can paint a large or small shadow underneath the sphere. 
You can play with a different opacity and flow settings of a brush. Finally, you can decrease the opacity of a layer when you are done. Create a new paint layer on the top of a pattern layer. Rename that layer Shadow 2. Set the blending mode to multiply. Holding the Shift key, select both layers and hit Ctrl plus G to create a group. Click on the Shadow 2 layer to activate it. Activate the Alpha Inheritance. You are going to repeat the process here. Just play with a different opacity and a flow and don't forget to use the eraser as well. Because we created the shadows, this really looks like the sphere is floating on the top of a checker flow. I hope this was an interesting little exercise. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching and happy creating.